The Cameroonian government uh, in quotes has not entrusted any foreign country to extend or or external entity with uh, any role to my or uh, of mediator or facilitator to settle the crisis. A statement from Cameroon's Minister of Communication on Monday noted that North Spain apparently denies a statement from Canada that it had been assigned to work on a peace process to resolve the crisis in Cameroon to English speaking regions. On January 21, Canada's foreign ministry said it had accepted a mandate to facilitate a peace process between Cameroon authorities and some separatist factions in English speaking regions to resolve a conflict that has gone since 2017. Separatists on their part have previously said they were committed to a negotiated uh, process mandated by Canada. United States Embassy in Cameroon's capital Yaoundé said on Twitter on Monday that it welcomed Canada's announcement of talks to resolve the crisis. A 2019 a major national dialogue granted special status to a two Anglophone regions but failed to resolve conflict. Other initiatives equally to resolve the crisis, especially to dialogue uh, equally to fail. What are the chances that the Canada mediation uh, will push through and can easily resolve the crisis? Still on today's program, we equally look at the death of Cameroonian journalists. The mutilated body of a prominent Cameroonian journalist was found on Sunday near the capital Yaoundé, five days after he was abducted uh, by un unidentified assailants. The press union and colleagues said on Sunday, the death of the journalist equally exposes cracks that still exist within the Cameroon press of freedom. Stay with us. This and more is what we shall be discussing on today's Pan-African debate. Hello and thanks for joining us on your Pan-African television. This is Afric Media. It's another opportunity we're meeting again to discuss some of the highlights around the African continent. We take interest today in Cameroon. We discussed the 2017 crisis in Cameroon, turning to one conflict in 2017. Until now, the crisis still rages on. Many have been killed, thousands equally displaced, and uh, the crisis, of course, is here to find a way out. We're looking at uh, peace process uh, mediation of uh, Canada, which Cameroon government says it uh, did not mandate Canada to mediate uh, to end the crisis in the two English speaking regions. We uh, have that to discuss uh, this day as Cameroon authorities uh, said it did not entrust any foreign country or any external entity with any rule of uh, mandator or mediator or facilitator to settle. Uh, the crisis in the two English speaking regions. Who is against uh, ending the crisis in the two English speaking regions? We are discussing that this day on the program. We are currently looking at the death of uh, Cameron journalist uh, Martinez Zogo, who was assassinated in Cameron's political headquarters, Yaoundé. This, of course, exposes the cracks that still exist within uh, in Cameron regarding press of freedom. That is what we have today on the table. We shall be pleased to hear from you. Uh, during the program, we shall uh, put the numbers on our screens where you can call us directly to share with us your opinions, and uh, we are expecting to hear from you. And joining us on the program this afternoon to discuss uh, these two topics, which directly uh, concerns uh, Cameroon, we be talking with those uh, via Zoom. We have in uh, on the other side of Zoom, uh, Dr. Nick, uh, Nicolas Santos. Uh, he's joining us uh, from uh, Zoom. Dr. Nicolas Santos, uh, good afternoon. You. Uh, uh, humanitarian advocate and 2022 U.S. President uh, Lifetime Award winner, Dr. Nicolas Santos. We're glad to have you on the program. Good afternoon. Um, thank you very much, uh, African Media, for giving me the opportunity once more to express my opinion about uh, what I see uh, a very, very crucial uh, diplomatic issue, which is the issue of peace. And the issue that is aimed at resolving the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. It will be an opportunity today to share my points of view, especially with regards to Canada and in regards to uh, the assassination of the journalist. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nicolas Santos. Thanks for accepting our invitation. We equally have uh, Saul Foncha, he's the chairman of New Africa a coalition. Mr. Saul Foncha, we equally are glad to have you on the program. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. And also, I want to take this opportunity to um, uh, thank all of you for participating in this segment. 
because I think we are the crucial point and we are the precipice uh, for peace in our country and reconciliation, genuine peace and reconciliation. And I'm very happy to be on this segment to share my thoughts and also to give some proposals there on the most viable pathway forward for our country to return to peace and to build a new Cameroon. Thank you. Thank you for accepting the invitation. We have equally uh, Mr. John Akuro. He is president of the consortium. Joining us, us equally via Zoom. Mr. Uh, John Akuro, we glad to have you. Good afternoon. Uh, we're expecting to... John Akuro, if you're there, please let's hear you. All right, we will be joined shortly by John Akuro via Zoom equally. And equally, John us here in the studio. We have uh, Mr. Fivis, your journalist and political analyst. Uh, welcome to the program. Good afternoon. Thanks very much. It's my pleasure, Mark, in present here today. And uh, special greetings to, um, we say, the people of Gunoko Village, as usual, uh, whether you are from Upper Gunoko, Lower Gunoko. Uh, Fringeng, Tuambeng, Ngamunga, and a host of other areas. We say special greetings to all of them uh, who are getting us right away. But above all, to the Royal Majesty, um, Chief Dr. Fomoki Walters, and to Royal Maj Majesty, uh, the Paramount Ruler of the Baba One people, and Bafanji. And just to let them, everyone know that we are here to contribute the way we think it's proper for things to be taught the right way and not for things to be taught off in the kangaroo manner. Much, Mr. Fivis. We equally have on Zoom, we have uh, Mr. Gene Elvis Bane. He is uh, a journalist as well as political analyst. Mr. Uh, Gene, welcome to the program. Join us from Cameron's political headquarters, Yaoundé. Thank you very much, Mr. Bidben. Good afternoon to you and to all our um, co-panelists as well as some um, of the millions of viewers of Afrique Media. I think it's always a pleasure each time you grant us an opportunity to be able to contribute our views as to what we think would make uh, life better, not only for our country, but at least for Africa as a continent. It's a pleasure being here with you. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate equally uh, you being there in the own day. We have uh, Dr. Ako uh, John. He's a lecturer and political analyst. Doctor, we're glad to have you on the program. Yeah, once more, Big Bat, it's a pleasure. Uh, yeah. Cameroon again. Africa and issues that disturb the nation. Mm -hmm. But for this moment, I would like to equally extend my condolences to His Royal Highness, Chief Henry of Botan Funi Village, uh, a chief that has been known to be so tight fast to his people, an individual that decided to stay with his people and maybe during the six years of uprising, uh, troubleness, and a lot of havoc, he was the lone chief in the whole of my new division to have settled in his village until his demise. We equally uh, ask at the Sisikos, I mean the biggest mm -hmm. of the Ikwe, especially that of Eta Armstrong, Eta, and many others that travel to the village that they have a safe trip while coming back home. Once more, we are in Cameroon and sharing, especially with the Canadian talks, listening to the head of state uh, end of year speech saying Cameroon remains open and will be ready to dialogue and continuous dialogue to find a sustainable solution to Cameroonian problem. Seen it coming just a few weeks after, and again, members of government trying to twat themselves around and thinking that we Cameroonians have become uh, laboratory rats, I mean the military, as well as the separatists should be slaughtered against self personalized egoistic tendencies, and that there is no way for peace. A few have decided to keep the country hostage, and that peace will not retain, but we pray that it will and it shall come to happen. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Akujan, for uh, coming. Just to note that our interest here is to find two ways in resolving a crisis in two English-speaking regions of Cameroon that has been going on since 2017. Many say the refusal of Cameroon government dampens uh, hopes for return of peace in the northwest and southwest region. And these, of course, many papers uh, this week, many reported that bad seats within Bias regime accused of frustrating efforts to resolve Anglophone crisis and blood uh, shedding on English-speaking or in English-speaking regions. 
We are here, we will be hearing from our different uh, panelists who are joining us to discuss on this topic uh, this afternoon. We pray that we respect each other's opinion and uh, deliberate uh, fruitfully towards resolving the crisis. We begin from, uh, to hear from you, uh, Dr. Nicola Santo, your journalist, uh, via Zoom. Once again, Dr. Nicola Santo, we begin with a uh, meeting of Cameroonian journalist uh, Martinez Zogo. The news was received, uh, of course, uh, on Monday, and this, of course, many say, has exposed the cracks that exist within Cameroon regarding uh, press freedom, freedom of speech, but freedom not guaranteed after speech. Uh, Nicola Santo, uh, let's hear from you. What's your take regarding uh, the killing and uh, assassination, a uh, kidnap and assassination of Cameroonian journalist uh, Martinez Zogo? Yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity first to open the floor. Um, uh, what I will say is a, it's a gross violation of human rights. Uh, this is not the first time we are seeing these kind of things happening. Uh, and it also goes to confirm what has been happening with the slaughtering of people in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon, uh, both by, uh, uh, by, by uh, armed groups on either side. Uh, be it civilian or be it military, uh, we have seen uh, since 2017 how people have been taken out of their houses, slaughtered, raped, and uh, even their heads cut off and thrown in the streets, which has become like a new normal in Cameroon that uh, to, for even kids uh, to find the head of a human being on a staircase is not a new normal. Uh, in our days, when we are growing up, we will hardly see this kind of things or let alone see a dead body. But today, uh, people are walking past dead bodies to their job sites. And then uh, the, the, the killing of this journalist is not the first of its kind. It has happened, and this has to do with uh, the censorship of the press. Uh, also, uh, you will know that uh, one of the factors that contributed to this crisis that we have been in are things of this kind of nature. And this also accounts for the mass influx of uh, uh, Cameroonians into foreign lands, some in Mexico, some along the uh, uh, North Africa in the desert, which has led to the granting of the temporal protective status by the United States. And here we are receiving them day in, day out, some jumping through the fences of Mexico. And this is about uh, persecution, persecution, barbaric persecution from things of this nature. And the question is, uh, all this down boils down to peace and reconciliation. The nation has to reconcile. The nation has to uh, come to a peace table whereby things of this nature have to be resolved. So uh, I'm glad you linked this up with the topic where we are talking about the peace, Canada peace uh, process that uh, is, is having some loopholes or is having some barricades uh, that we should talk to. We should talk uh, uh, like, this, like the same package. We should talk about it like same package. I think uh, uh, I will condemn outrightly the claim of these journalists, and uh, we really need uh, press reforms. We really need to enact strong laws about freedom of speech freedom of association, and we need to bring all these corporates uh, to book, and they have to stand a trial, and they need to be punished, so as to serve an example that this kind of barbaric killing should never repeat itself again. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Nicola Santos, note that uh, Martinez Zogo, before his death, was the director of a private radio station, Amplitude FM. Uh, he was kidnapped on the January 17 by unknown assailants after trying to enter a police station to escape his attackers. Zogo had recently, uh, according to information, been taken on air about uh, uh, talking on air about a case of alleged embezzlement involving a media outlets with government uh, connections. Uh, let's hear from you, uh, Mr. Foncha. Uh, this, what does this mean to you, and uh, how do you think Cameroonians should react, or what do you think uh, the government should do uh, regarding the protection of uh, journalists, especially in Cameroon, regarding the death of Martinez Zogo? Well, um, uh, uh, thank you for um, uh, bringing up this very um, uh, important uh, situation that is happening right now in Cameroon. Uh, first of all, I want to extend my condolences to the family of uh, Martinez Zogo, but we must uh, uh, realize that this is not the first time it's happened. Remember Wazizi from our English-speaking extract in the country that was uh, brutally killed as well, and other journalists. And we must realize that Cameroon has got 
uh, presidentship for the longest time ever since we had our, our uh, uh, independence from uh, France or uh, when English Cameroon joined um, uh, the French Cameroon, you know, to create a United Republic of Cameroon or a Cameroon Federation. We have always had this presidentship. And this is just this case of Martin Zogo that was brutally kidnapped and killed is just another example that Cameroon is moving with full speed ahead into an existential an existential political crisis beyond 2025. Why I say beyond 2025 is because those individuals or persons who are involved in this type of assassination and killings in Cameroon, those are people triangulating or juggling themselves with their proxies who are committing these huge atrocities across the nation. They are juggling and positioning themselves to wrench the power of government in that council. We know the assassination of Martin Zogo were not just ordinary bandits, like ordinary bandits trying to rob him. This is connected to his outspokenness about the level of corruption that exists within the government of Cameroon, that is within certain kleptocrats who are part of that government. We know some of them. We can't be naming them here, but we all know, Cameroonians know exactly that they have extremely corrupt individuals in the government, and we are coming into a head right now, into a space right now, if the government of Cameroon, the judiciary, and the security forces don't clean up their mass levels of corruption and nepotism, the country is going to descend into a political crisis that we have never seen before. And we must understand, we have to put in context also that Cameroon is the most consequential country in Central Africa and the Gulf of Guinea region. So Cameroon descending into a political crisis and a conflict that has been raging for six years today in the northwest and southwest regions of the country is very detrimental to the entire project of CAFTA, Continental African Trade Agreement. It's very detriment detrimental to also the integration of the region economically and politically. So Cameroon has to lead by example as the leader of that sub-region. But right now, looking at the way things are taking people, kidnapping people in the in the northwest region, in the southwest region, and killing them, kidnapping journalists like Manzogo and killing them brutally. I mean just it's it's fun. I can't even speak the way that guy was killed. But what I want to tell Cameroonians today is we Cameroonians in general if we cannot objectively criticize the government, then we are also part of the tyranny that we live under. So Martin Zogo was a clear example of a patriot who criticizes the excesses of the government, the corruption, uh -huh. and this patriot was killed for bringing out to light what is eventually going to be the future, a brighter future for Cameroonians to be able to muster the courage to speak truth to power like he did, and he died for that. All Martin right, thank Zobo you. Uh, thank you for, for the freedom of Cameroon. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Foncha. Thanks for that. Uh, let's hear from you, uh, Mr. Gene Alvis uh, Bane. Uh, you are a journalist and a police analyst based in Yaoundé. The death of Martinez Zogo is coming uh, just after Cameroonians, actually, those names are yet to uh, forget uh, the uh, death of uh, Samuel Wazizi in 2019. Now, we have another case again at hand. Martinez Zogo was kidnapped and brutally murdered. As a journalist, how does this make you feel, noting that uh, the press, of course, it's under attack again? Yeah, you have to put on your microphone, Mr. Gene Elvis. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you know, I was saying that it is common and easy today to say 
that um, uh, Martinez was um, uh, kidnapped and assassinated by people who are still to be identified officially. So in that case, we are hoping that the justice system in this country is going to do something in that line as far as um, uh, uh, the, ex uh, the, the freedom of expression is concerned in the domain of journalism. But we also know that in the case of Wazizi that you just cited, those who killed him were well known and an official statement from the state clearly um, established that um, he was murdered by um, uh, those that were down at the time. Today the question is what was done? And you see, before Wazizi, we had other cases, now it is Martinez. And uh, personally, I would tell you that I am one of those who have often been very, very skeptical when it comes to the justice system in this country, especially when it comes to shedding much light on cases like this one. Because like many have said, and like Cameroonians today already know, these are cases that are directly linked to individuals by virtue of their profession and what they do with some individuals, be it within the system in place or some private individuals who don't feel comfortable with what these journalists do. Therefore, they have to take the law into their own hands and uh, they do what we have seen them do before and now again. But um, uh, the only thing I can rather regret, like I've said already, is the fact that we have a justice system that seems to have pushed us to losing confidence in them. And, uh, in this case, we only hope that perhaps once they will be able to do their job the right way and be able to situate Cameroonians exactly, not only as to who are the people who did what happened to Martinez, but that they will actually come out rightly and uh, render justice the way it is supposed to be done. Let those who committed this crime be caught book and the answer for their crimes. And of course, if possible, they go back into digging into the cases of people like um, Wazizi, um, the BB Gotters, and the others of, of, the, of the past to see that justice is done. Talking about press as a whole in Cameroon, I will tell you that um, uh, the only thing I can say is that Cameroonian journalists should not um, uh, give up they should not get intimidated because when you see uh, the, the, the publicity that was done around the death of um, Martinez, then you understand that it was a direct or indirect way of communicating to some major men who still respect the ethics of the profession and do their job without bias, that if you go digging into certain areas in this country, your life is at stake. So I just want to think that we can rather but encourage journalists to keep doing their jobs. They should be conscious that those are some of the dangers that go with the profession. And come to think of it, talking about Martinez, you realize that there are some whistleblowers, even before his kidnapping, who already announced that Martinez was a target. But now, if the justice, if the security agent, uh, uh, agents in this country were serious, at least they should have taken that into consideration and maybe some sort of uh, want to guarantee him at least some minimal um, security, at least within this period of time. But that was never the case. So we want to hope, too, that there are some errors that when we have committed or once we have committed as a nation, as a people, as mortars, maybe from now henceforth, the, 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 the security system should be able to take that into consideration. When next may be such whistleblowers come out to tell that these and these persons' lives are at stake, they should at least uh, uh, issue them some minimal respect, uh, sorry, some minimal protection as far as their jobs are concerned. I want to think that the only thing that journalists in this country beg to do is to do their job. I am talking about the genuine ones, of course, because we know that there are some who have decided to practice brown journalism. They will prefer to report on any kind of a thing or even give us biased information just for the sake of maybe earning a living. May Martinez Zogo's life rest in peace. May his family be comforted, and of course, may the lives of all other journalists who have died under similar situations, like the Wazizis, rest in peace, as we continue to hope that for once the justice system in this country is going to do something in the right direction. Mr. Gene Elvis, uh, let's hear from you, Mr. Five. Is your colleague, journalist, and political analyst? Are uh, we expecting to see justice taking its course uh, following the death of Martinez Zogo, noting that uh, since 2019? Uh, we've not yet seen justice being done since the murder of Wazizi. Uh, it is a very uh, tricky and technical question. But I think that the answer is not far-fetched. When I say it's not far-fetched, it's because we'll be able to draw analysis based on the different uh, uh, scenarios that have taken place. We know about the Wazizi, which we know. There's another French journalist who was, who was equally uh, killed under unclear circumstances in Yaoundé before even coming down to the case of um, Martinez Zogo. So if you look at it, there will be no justice. I know how the Kangaro system functions. It's, it's a confused system that is limping on one leg. Why do I say so? Don't be surprised that in the days ahead, they'll pick some few hoodlums around the corner and brandish and say, these are the persons who are suspected to have carried out the murder of Martinez Zogo. And so what? 
So the state is quiet because they are carefully working out a defense mechanism. These are things we should set them clear. Now, do we sit every day and say we are condemning by mouth? You condemn today, they kill tomorrow. You condemn tomorrow, they kill the day after tomorrow. You condemn the day after tomorrow, they kill the day after the other tomorrow. So at the end of it, where are we heading to? We should be looking at what are the strategies put in place to overcome the brutal murder, assassination, and torture of journalists in this country. And that's why I say that, that's why I get to know exactly those who work for the state and those who are equally objective as per se. Because from every indication, those who work for the state are equally fit far from it and are leaking oil that drips from the back part of their hands, will be talking water in their mouth. Everybody say, oh, we condemn, oh, we condemn. I saw the Cameroon uh, French embassy in Paris carrying out uh, uh, special tributes to Madnezogo. Is that what we want? So you want to kill me, and then uh, we start having all night vigils, Cameroon embassy in Australia, Cameroon embassy in Liberia, Cameroon embassy. That is bullshit. It's bullshit. These ambassadors, if they were good enough, should have been able to act as advisors to their home government. Please, why this thing is taking? Is there any means we can track down those who are behind? That's what we expect. Because the state thinks that they are too intelligent, that those who step on their toes must be eliminated, and those who dance the buffet dance with them should be felicitated. How do you understand that if I come from Gunoko, for example, and I am murdered, my traditional ruler wants to perform traditional rights on my behalf, the president of the chief's conference say in Momo will come out to say that no, we do not mandate the chief of Gunoko to carry on that. Does he, is, is, is he expected to, to, to request audience and uh, permission from the president of the, of, of, the, of the chiefs in that area before carrying out that? You can see how people play Maria with people's lives. And look at the situation. That somebody dies, it is true. Minister of Communication went to Amplitude FM. But is that all? We are not getting any assurance. We have not had an official communique from the head of state, President Paul Bia, to say, we give you this few time, we will track down those who are behind. These guys take us for fools. We are not fools as per se. The ping pong game, Yaoundé will be, will be playing over there and then getting their boot lickers around them to be joining and blowing grammar. We condemn, we condemn, we condemn, and so what? That is where the issue lies, Mr. Lewis. So if we have a genuine regime with genuine followers who are patriotic as per se, they will not only be blaming grammar that will condemn, they will be using their connections that they have been using to perpetrate evil and fit from the regime, to get back to the powers that be and say, but please, can we investigate this? How do you tell me that somebody is kidnapped in front of a gendarmerie brigade where he is knocking and begging for assistance for him to be rescued? And you will tell me the gendarmerie brigade was closed. At what time was it closed? Gendarmerie offices are always open even in the night. They only close the doors around 10 p.m. When they want to sleep. But there is somebody on duty that you can even knock the door and shout, oh, c'est cool. And he opens and comes to your rescue. It was an organized crime that the state needs to wash their hands, Pontius Pilate, by bringing us the real culprits. I say real culprits. We don't want to go and pick some, some rascals around the corner, can't put placards on their chest, and say these are the persons suspected. No, 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 no. The more they delay, the more we know the gimmicks are on, and the more there will be fine tuning strategies to cover up whatever has, done, has, has happened. So the state should help us because it is the duty of any government to protect their citizens. Look at what happens in the Turkish embassy over there. But we are told the journalist, the investigation was on, and there are results as to how he disappeared in the embassy. So we cannot come to a situation in Cameroon. A Prado is mentioned. We cannot authenticate the information, but other information standing tells you that before the journalist was assassinated, there were already attempts on his life, and he had made mention of this to some quarters. How will Far Elvis be on thread? And then he takes makes mission, he reports to A, B, C, D, and finally he's eliminated. And those people he reported to them are not coming out to say yes. He had told us that this number called him, he has some person called him. These are the persons that should be rounded. Irrespective of their position in government, those persons should have been remanded in custody. Now, whether you are a director general, whether you are a minister, whether you are a worker at the presidency, you are supposed to be rounded now, as I speak now. So that they begin to carry out the investigation. Not that people are moving freely. And then very soon they come and tell us that they've arrested some few persons, investigation is ongoing. Before you know it, the case dies a natural death. The case of Martinez Zogo will not die a natural death. Come on, hear that. If you think that you want to be limiting people like flies, it will not die a natural death. 
But I think that Luis, in this country, is a rule of law. I want to give you all the benefit of doubt. The Justice Department and the Secret Services should do their job. If Secret Service realizes that another Secret Service agent was behind the brutal border, the Secret Service should arrest the other Secret Service agent who is said to be in the limelight. That's what we need here. And so I don't know how it's taking long. I am very worried that till now, places are quiet. The said rumors, journalists are talking, the Cameroonians are talking. What is defense saying? I expect the Delegate General for National Security to make an official statement. What is the Secretary of State for National General saying? What is the Director of SEMIL saying? What is the Director of a Special Branch saying? If they don't come out, it means they are covering something. We expect them in less than no time to come out and give us traces, including the surveillance camera that was equally placed at the key air junction areas to track that and tell us that this is where we're arriving at. If not, then the game is on. So, Ako John, lecturer and political analyst. When you look at the death of uh, Martinez Zogo and the circumstances under which uh, he was uh, kidnapped and assassinated, I look at the press uh, in Cameroon and uh, we still have fresh in mind the death of Wazizi who died in custody. We will sum all this up. What do you think is the future of Cameroon press freedom? I. There is nothing we should be talking without them. Eh? Somewhere they will tell you that press freedom is a continuous process and that um, we cannot get on one day and find everything on a platter of gold mm. and that where freedom has been expressed, we were witnesses of the 1990 declarations, the right to freedom, free organization, free press, free political parties. But I will tell you that somewhere I said, until there is a will of the people to implement the undertaking they have had, the constitution of this nation has part of it we call the preamble of that constitution, which is an, a representation, I mean a representation of most international conventions that Cameroon had signed, the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, and many other rights, which means that if we are, I said, if we are in government, the moment we have taken national and international engagement, the moment we have an obligation to protect, the moment we have a duty to get what is supposed to be done, be done in the right manner, we are supposed to see what we call a general movement. I will not see a gunshot in the United States. You will find the governor. You will find the mayor of the town. You will find the security, I mean, the security of that particular state. The head of the police department giving you details. The, the, the inquiry commissioner giving you details. In Cameroon, we allow everything that we keep on talking and talking and that nothing will come out. It equally gives us an idea. People are thinking that the Cameroon we are thinking and trying to conceive or project, it is one which cannot be achieved. And what is done in other countries can never be achieved in Cameroon. Why then do we get into such an engagement? One of the very first person, I have said several times that when power is overdue, it corrupts absolutely. That which means a few has taken Cameroon on themselves. And somewhere I said, we live in a system a system of barbarism, a system where people think those who don't have the power cannot speak. How then do you explain an individual within his confine of exercising his own profession is being tortured, arrested, humiliated, and even like molested to this level with Martinez Ogo? It is not what we are talking about, Wazi. Some people we are talking today because it concerns the press and we use the press. In more of it and in many other states, we know that. The press is at least, if not second, third in terms of power control. But we have to accept that they have a role. What are we going to do after Wazizi? Like you see, Mr. Barney just said that on the other time with Wazizi, those who were responsible are known. And up to now, nothing has been done. And now, in the case of Martinez Zogo, the claim we have all of us is that the identities of those who are concerned are not known. What becomes of situations when those who are even authorized, those who have been incarnated by the laws of the nation, the constitution, to take care of their citizens, are the one again at the last and the still end tormenting the same citizen. What punishment might be reserved for such? Because we are talking, we want a liberal society where all Cameroonians feel belonging, not where a few own the nation, and that maybe after them, 
the nation cannot continue. A few have the willingness and the power to speak and give information. Today, we are still expecting a government communique. At least it is more than days. We have not seen the commissioner of police of that department before the press to tell us to what extent, what inquiry has given, and what findings they might have seen. We find information, even the one coming from the hospital, after the pre autopsy test, telling us it was a preliminary result, and just information was given for few cameras or few journalists. This is supposed to be a public presentation of national and international press, because this killing does not only violate Cameroonian national laws, it equally violates international laws, which means somewhere, if Cameroonian authorities cannot identify, then the international committee has a duty to ask the Cameroonian government to respond to such instances. Zogo will not be the lone person. It might not be the last. And we think that in future, if care is not taken, other Cameroonians are going to be victims. At a particular age, at a particular time, those who find in authorities with the wisdom they have incarnated for all this while, we are thinking that there is a need to have a more responsible government. A government that is capable of living to the aspiration of the people. The right to life is not mingled with any other right. Because in the absence of the right to life, then any other right uh, crumbles. We need to protect life than any other thing we have in Cameroon. But when we cannot protect, we cannot even give an account of what Cameroonians are. What are we saying? We... Cameroonians will continue to deny that, and we think the proper system, even in the top parts of the state, this is what we are talking of, bad governance, that the issues of Cameroon are issues of bad governance. Is there no need for accountability? Are Cameroonians not willing and capable of getting information concerning one or other citizens? What is not going right? We need to know the details of what the Cameroonian authorities have done up to this level, and if possible, we need to see the procreation around to what extent is going with inquiry. In fact, in criminal cases, the state remains the plaintiff. And we need to see to what extent the Procureur General has taken this case as his own, not the one that he's authorized. Because we have seen in several instances, they will tell you that he has done his inquiry, he's waiting for decisions. How can you be in the judiciary and you want to such decision to continue with a case from an executive organ? It, be, it, it gives an the idea that the nation we call Cameroon is simply being rolled on sand, not on solid rocks. We need a nation whose rules will last and be tested for time, not the one that become more perishable and shaky. If Martin Ezogo has a life, like what the life of others, Cameroonians and journalists in particular, for exercising their profession, there is need for the Cameroon government to protect every citizen, every citizen, I mean every citizen without this. It is not because he may be a low-class person. We have the right to information. The right to information does not come from the state. We have the private press with Zogo, but even within his mandate and with the communique he made within his program, Abutias, he has promised Cameroonians that there are details of those documents he will present to them. And we we're all, all of us who are equally media consultants, we needed such documents so that tomorrow they should not tell us who song the proofs, that there are no proofs. We need proofs when we talk. Otherwise, all of us now here are talking philosophy rather than talking knowledge, because none of us have details of what happened and why he was assassinated. Mm -hmm. Everywhere we always need the documentation. So the duty becomes that of the state uh, prosecution at the Procurator General in Yaoundé and his forces, meaning the judicial police, should even be updating us. When you go on advance, I'm talking to where uh, uh, Foncha, Marshall, and maybe Dr. Santos, uh, they will tell you what the legal department is made of and who gives you details on such cases minute by minute because the press should be there waiting. And this is the type of information that citizens need until the truth is released. The press, the media, I mean, the, 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 the legal department will not sleep. We equally need the same activeness within the Cameroonian government. Zogo, I mean, is just the first case that has gotten this. To what is it? People never dropped flowers or made candles around his building. But you see, Zogo has a different edge. Others could not console with Wazizi because even the authors were known. From his arrest from Boya to when he got to Yaoundé, we knew those who carried him, where he was dumped. Those people are still alive. We need facts. Let it not be like the other cases. We are talking of uh, Monseigneur Bala, whom equally too, a lot of doubts were surrounding him. Up to now, we cannot lay hands on what happened, where and how. Every time we have always seen that the inquiry, the investigations are still going on. And who are those responsible?
we need to scratch and scrape out a system that is linked on destroying the very people they are called to protect. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Akko John, lecturer and political analyst. We extend a very uh, heartfelt condolences to the uh, family of Martin Zogo, hoping that uh, his case will be identified and brought to book. We continue with Cameron. Uh, still, this time around, an uncertain atmosphere reigns in the conflict in the English speaking regions of Cameron following government's dismissal of the Canadian peace talks, the peace talks which brings uh, on the dialogue with leaders of the various separatist groups operating in the conflict regions and the government of Cameroon were announced on January 20, 2023 by the Canadian Foreign uh, Minister. However, this uh, information or statement was dismissed by the Cameroon government citing that it has not mandated any foreign entity to help it with settling uh, the crisis in the English-speaking regions of Cameroon that has been going on since 2017. We hear from you, uh, Dr. Nicola Santo. Cameroon government says it did not mandate any entity to help it in the mediation of uh, the crisis in Cameroon, but we understand that uh, there have been negotiations that started between Cameroon government and uh, the separatist movement, which was uh, being facilitated by Canada. Now, uh, what's your opinion regarding uh, this state from Cameroon government owing to a peace talk uh, that was expected to be uh, you know, facilitated by Canada? You have to put on your microphone, Dr. Nicola Santo. Your microphone is not on, please. It's not getting. You put on your microphone, we can't hear you from here, Dr. Nicholas. Can you hear me now? Can yes, you hear me now? You. Yeah, uh, go ahead, uh, Dr. Nicholas mm -hmm. Santo. Yeah, uh, all of us, the whole nation, and uh, even us, the uh, ex separatists or the former separatist leaders, uh, we have been clamoring for peace. Uh, myself and Foncha sitting there, we have, we are one of those who stepped out and began working for peace. And when we had that announcement ourselves, we were quite happy. Same like uh, the other, uh, the entire nation was happy that at least something is being done in the right direction. But the first thing we have to call, bring to the attention of each and everyone is that uh, there are a lot of things that has happened because uh, before a house is constructed, we should make sure that the foundation of that house is very solid. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember that uh, there are four things that we have always been talking about that characterize the same people who claim to represent uh, uh, the Southern Cameroonians or the people of the Northwest and Southwest region in the diaspora. These people also have their own flaws which have attributed to what has happened because the government of Cameroon cannot initiate something then out of a sudden back out with a strong worded communication of that nature. And these things are characteristics of the things that made most of us to have pulled out of this separatist movement, which are basically ego problems, ego problems, rhetoric problems, denial and, uh, and, and, and delusion. Denial is a delusion. Because let me tell you, if the government of Cameroon began contacting Canada mm. to discuss about peace, that was a good sign. Myself and Funcha received it with a lot of happiness because this is what we have been looking for and this is what we have been working towards during the Peace Task Force Initiative and the Peace Pictures. We went out to receive the head of state in the United States when he came here and we presented ourselves as ex separatists giving some of our apologies for what we know that we influenced negatively, extending a hand to him to embrace the separatists who are still our comrades, our ex-comrades, who are still hanging with the notion of an illusionary state or delusionary state called Ambatonia. They should tone down their language of calling people black legs, calling people green legs, calling people yellow legs, or trying to uh, label people with red crosses on their face and all those. If they turn down some of these things and come out of those evil problems and believe and be apologetic for what they have done, 
for some of the things that have crimes that are committed. Because remember, we are those who warn that the price of having a free country is very, very heavy. Because of what need will it be to get a country and not have citizens in that country? And this is where we are in the city here with about six to eight thousand people dead. This is something that they would have received in the 20 years. Kamalanya did it by going on air and saying that he is happy and that the, that peace is going to, uh, I mean, uh, peace has to to some peace talks and stuff. He was happy and he was congratulating President Bia. The same President Bia who went to Washington, D.C. two months ago to receive and we were castigated and criticized and almost killed because of that. So let me tell you, hypocrisy is what characterizes all these things. Ego, denial and delusion. Even when the head of state extended that hand, or if the Cameroon government contacted Canada and there was something in the pipeline like a peace, a peace talk, they would have kept it loose. But they came out in their parallel moral talk shows, announced it, and using the same name of what the Cameroon government doesn't want to hear, which is that Ambazonia will be in Cameroon, not that the people of Southwest and Northwest region. We will not come in Cameroon for citizens of Cameroon. We will not be in Cameroonian delegation. So sometimes it is good to change the kind of language that is being used to see the situation if you really want peace. So I see a lot of flaws also on the part of all those who went to Canada because I saw some of their communicators were saying the state of Amazonia versus the state of Cameroon. If you, for example, if the government is initiating something in good faith and out of sudden it becomes something that is a state pitting. They stand against an illusionary state and, and in the presence of a another country like Canada, that were the reasons that I think the Cameroon government say no, we cannot continue this. So the best way they did was just to say we didn't authorize Canada to come out uh, to be to, to act as a mediator. So that's the way I look at it. But the fact is, the bottom line is it's a good, it's a good step. In the right direction because all of us have been clamoring for peace, all of us have been working towards peace, and we really badly need that peace. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nicolas Santos. Uh, now, Mr. Concha, uh, what do you think is the reason why the government uh, rejected uh, participating in the peace talk uh, openly? Meanwhile, uh, according to information, the disabled parties have been meeting in uh, Canada for pre-peace talks. Why did the Cameroon government come out to reject and say it, it uh, did not mandate it, any entity to mediate any crisis in the two speaking regions of Cameroon? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Lewis, for that question. But uh, as of uh, today, uh, that is where the Cameroon government stands. The Cameroon, Cameroon government stands is they did not mandate any foreign entity to organize a mediation process for peace. From my understanding of things, the Cameroon government is a faction of the Cameroon government. Probably the Prime Minister's office initiated this uh, pre talks for peace and reconciliation with the separatist movement. But the fact of the matter is, the Cameroon government never gave authority to Canada to mediate between Cameroon and the illusionary state of Ambazonia as the separatist leaders and their cohorts have gone and been out for several weeks pushing in the social media space and other print media. So we are talking about mediation for what? Are we talking about peace and reconciliation amongst Cameroonians, especially in the Northwest region and the Southwest region? We are not talking about a negotiation for peace with an illusionary state ambassador. So, as much as myself and Dr. Nicolas Santos, we have been working on peace and reconciliation ever since we abandoned the Secessionist Movement. The Secessionist Movement, which our former compatriots, those leaders, are making the same mistake over and over and over again for trying to self-appoint themselves as leaders to represent the peoples of the former Southern Cameroons, which is comprised of the Northwest region and the Southwest region. We have to separate the two things here. Peace and reconciliation is what the Cameroon government has been calling for, and we, ourselves as ex-separatist leaders, myself and Dr. Nicola Santos, we have been on this train ever since we left, and we have been 
castigated, called all types of names, and even put death threats on us because we were calling for peace and reconciliation. Now, the Cameroon government actually has been calling for this openly in the head of state in his uh, new year, um, 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 and talked about peace and reconciliation, but not with an illusionary ambassador state. So, if the secessionist leaders, we were in Canada, want to continue with this process, they have to come to the table understanding that they are bringing their various secessionist factions for peace and reconciliation in Cameroon, not negotiating peace between an illusionary state with the state of Cameroon as recognized as a sovereign state. So I am still appealing for the government to find a way to, re to refresh that statement that was put out by Mr. René Sally, the Minister of Communication, to find a way to talk with these same leaders again, even initiate a new process and make it very clear that the Cameroon government is interested in peace and reconciliation amongst Cameroonians from the Northwest and Southwest region, especially and the entire population of the country from all the 10 respective regions. That is how it should be going in. That peace procession was not a national conference or a constitutional conference. Now we're going to be going in there to determine the form of state and governance in Cameroon. That is how the secessionists later went to Canada. They were perceiving it, and that is how they publicly stated their position as if they were going to Canada, and Canada was mediating a peace process that's going to facilitate and bring to light their illusions of Ambazonia. So the Cameroon government had the right to reject that statement or that wording or that process that Canada put out because the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Canada jumped ship to go out and put this statement. I want to ask one question, Mr. Lewis. What is the official Canadian representative body in Cameroon saying? The, the Canadian ambassador to Cameroon. The Canadian ambassador to Cameroon or the Canadian embassy in Cameroon has not given an official press release for the, from, 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 uh, to the Cameroonian people. You sitting there as a journalist in the country have not been given the audience to ask these questions to the Canadian ambassador for him to show that the Cameroon government actually Ask the Canadian government for uh, to, to, to mediate this process with an illusionary state of Abbasan. No, the Cameroon government asks for peace and reconciliation. Full stop. So I am calling on my fellows, um, about, about former friends, because some of them now I say former friends because they will kill me if they have the opportunity. They will chop my head up and put on the stick, like my, 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 my esteemed friend um, Ayaba said. So I'm calling on it for them to understand that those of us who are who abandoned the Sessionist movement, we believe in a new Cameroon. But in order for that new Cameroon to be rebirthed, we must first reconcile among ourselves for peace. Any other topic outside of peace and reconciliation has to be fully represented by the Cameroon people from the entire 10 regions of the country. We are talking about something completely different now. That is a constitutional conference. Then a Canada, Cameroon government never asked me to go and help have a constitutional conference in Canada. Ask them for peace and reconciliation. So Mr. Ayaba, Mr. Akwanga, Mr. John Barakoro, and the rest of them, Sesekotabe, Julius, I am calling on all of you, all my fellow brothers and sisters. This is the time for us all to embrace peace and reconciliation. If we want to talk about other aspects of the state and form of state, Leave your illusionary Ambazonian state and come to the table when the people of Cameroon decide to hold a constitutional conference that will be equally represented by people from all the ten respective regions. So Canada jumped ship for both, and Cameroon withdraw from that talks. Talk for peace and reconciliation. That's all I got to say. We have to make peace and reconciliation, then we move on to the next step in Cameroon. That's all I can say. I think it's a missed opportunity by the separatist leaders 
and also it was a missed opportunity by Cameroonians for All peace right. and reconciliation. And Thank we you. have to restart this process. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Foncha. Thank you very much. And in reaction to what you said, uh, following uh, the reaction to the declaration as well of uh, Cameroon government saying it is not mandated entity to uh, mediate in the peace process. Now, this is what the Canadian uh, government said. Uh, it said. Uh, uh, the Canadian government insisted that the talks between the two main actors of the conflict remain on pay tube. It further urged for summons uh, that representatives of the Cameroon government and several Anglophone separatist groups have been meeting in Canada for pre mediation talks and they affirm their participation in further peace talks to end the conflict. That's, of course, what uh, the Canadian government reacted following. Uh, the statement from Cameroon government that it did not mandate any entity to assist in resolving the Anglophone crisis. Now, uh, let me hear me, Mr. Gene Elvis Bane. You just listened to Mr. Foncha. Now, uh, do you think uh, the reason why Cameroon government is backing out of this peace talk is because uh, of uh, the uh, position presented by the separatists, uh, of course, following what Mr. Foncha said? Mr. Gene Elvis Bane, can you hear me? Uh, Mr. Chair Elvis? Yes? Yeah, uh, let's, yeah let's hear from you. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. I was about saying that to me, let us really be factual with certain things. I don't think that the Canadian government or Canada could have made that blunder of going out to issue the statement that they need without ever having any pretext with Cameroon. See, the Cameroonian government claimed that they never mandated anybody to mediate or facilitate or do any such thing. Second, you realize that after the Kaiser statement, um, uh, the separatist leaders or the ambassador leaders, they issued a statement in which they themselves also made, uh, uh, made clear that they had agreed to go in for some sort of free talk or some sort of mediation or whatsoever thing. So I don't want to think that the statement by government in Cameroon could be that serious to want to claim that Canada did not or receive the mandate from them to have to do so. Well, we all know that free talks have been going on since the month of October. Um, uh, Secondly, I don't want to think that countries like um, the U.S., like the Vatican and others, can now publish up that endorsement without verifying to actually show that Canada or that Cameroon are the free talks of uh, Now, come to, to talk about the fact that Cameroon might have backed off because of what um, uh, Fonja and Dr. Nick say here. I don't want to think that um, uh, that can be can help. Because when I hear, for instance, um, uh, Foncha say that the government might have backed up because perhaps a faction of the government led by the Prime Minister initiated such a plot without the government of Cameroon. We, we should be careful when say the Prime Minister is the head of government in this country. And I don't want to think that he could go as far as initiating such talks without blessings from the head of the concern. To say that for a faction of the government going in an hour without the government, I don't want to think that's the reason why they backed up. Secondly, to want to insist on the fact that the Canadian official in Cameroon, the ambassador, has not made any statement. When the Canadian government issued a clear statement and have even come after the Cameroon community to insist that peace has been ongoing, I don't think it is only what the Canadian ambassador will say in Cameroon that will therefore come to convince me because I don't think the ambassador too will also come to say something different from what his own government has repeatedly insisted on. Thirdly, to want to think that the government in Cameroon backed out because I'm having more people black legs, they are hypocrites and over not. I want to think that it is a bit of hypocrisy coming in from the state of Cameroon. On the contrary, like Fonja himself has rightly said, I think it is a missed opportunity for Cameroon to sit at the table for us to talk. Because they, the government, when I say they, I mean the regime, they have been insisting of not knowing we need to talk, at least for once. We saw the, 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 the separatist leaders who accepted this time to talk. But now it is the government that backs off. If there are certain things that they did not like or do not like, like the Nixon said about the attitude of the separatist leaders, I want to think that in a process of mediation, people are caught on the mediator and have the means to call some people to give in certain uh, at certain areas and take what the other person offers and vice versa. It is not for you as an individual, therefore, after pre talk consultation to take upon yourself to say you are backing up because others are hypocrites and other not. I want to think that in this crisis, both camps have been hypocritical in their way of doing things. But if today there is a possibility for people to sit and talk, at least I want to think we should have at least given that 
process a chance go on to the meditation table go on to the meditation table and only back out from there maybe when we discover that other come in some sort of important field but like i say i think that canada is a country that we can take serious in the presence of un officials and other nations we could give it a chance and then see what obtains from there one other thing i will tell you mr biden is that i want to say that if Cameroon back out is because in reality within this field there are some people who don't even want the world to come to an end. And remember that when the head of state in his every year speech made mention of the fact that Cameroon was open for uh, uh, for peace talks and all not, it might even be because he knew well that his government was in some free talks that was eventually going to um, uh, lead into maybe a process. You see, you know, knowing the way Mr. Bia does his politics, he did not necessarily need to come out and start announcing to you. Just Mr. Uh, Gina Elvis Banner, we hope to re-establish connections with you uh, just uh, shortly. Uh, now, Mr. Elvis, uh, former U.S. Secretary of State Tibor Adig, in one of his tweets, said he was not surprised with Cameron's denial of the Canada Peace Initiative, uh, noting that it's a proof of division within the ruling class. What we understand is that President Paul is one who uh, holds the power to decide on what should happen. Just like Mr. Gina Elvis equally said, uh, President Bia during his interview speech, and equally, Dr. Uh, Ako equally mentioned that Mr. Bia said he was, he was ready to dialogue to end the crisis in the two English speaking regions. Now, this division in the ruling class, who are those who certainly don't want this conflict to come to an end or who don't want this dialogue to, to push through? Um, those who don't want the dialogue to push through are those who are fitting fat from the conflict. We don't need to meet a soothsayer to understand this. But I think that while coming in, and listen carefully to Dr. Santos and the Foncha, but I think that people should understand that we are no longer fools. We could be in Cameroon, but we are as intelligent 10 times than those who are equally abroad. Because knowledge now, you can seek knowledge depending on how you study and look for it. Mm. Now, you see why sometimes we might be able to say there are some persons who will not want the conflict to end. This is African media, a repeatable TV, to hear those kind of words from America, from the Tonic Santos owner, it is ridiculous. I say ridiculous in broad daylight. If Dr. Santos and Foncha were living in Cameroon with us, and in the relative areas, those their grandma will not be the way they are talking there. They speak very well. I am absurd. I'm so disturbed right now to hear the commissions of that high portfolio will tell us that it is the behavior of the of the separatists called the same black leg and all the like. One thing to Santos said, which is correct, is that ego yeah. might have been. Time with him. He said ego. But I am disturbed because he is on educating Cameroonians. The ego is on both sides. Mm -hmm. Why I say what does it mean? Cameroon government calls this AOB terrorists. The other kind of language tells you that if a man is on the side of terrorists, he can willingly come and sit down and talk with you. It's in my imagination. So why are they call a black leg? You, the government, also calls them terrorists. And as you give all kinds of names, it is not a good scenario for a dialogue atmosphere. But the the objective that is on both sides of the coin. But when we are on a particular side, we live on one side, for reasons best known to us, it defeats the purpose of peace. It means some of us don't even want this peace to, to come back. Now, look at the whole scenario. I don't want to use platform by advertising ourselves. We are ex separatist fighters. We did this. We came to America. Uh, we welcome President Pope. That's not what I was saying. It's bullshit. We have hot fires on our table. That is far more than advertising ex separatist fighters who were received by President Pope. That is not a drama here now. Because I was saying, Security officers were killed under the Mbamenda. It's a call for concern. As we're saying, another ambush sometimes took place in Mali at the Aran Saturn Bridge. Security officers were killed. I hear ammunition were taken out. It's a call for concern. That a stimulus shoots A or B, or the officials were shot in Bamenda, it's a call for concern. That is what matters. Not whether A is ex separatist fighter and grammar up and down. No. I think that, Mr. Lewis, the issues are that we are deviating. Let the paralysis in America understand that this is not America, this is Cameroon. And for, for someone to think that the current government just backed up because of reason A, reason B, I expect honest persons to say that Cameroon's government backed, that is, coming out of it, is a blunder. 
It's a blunder on the part of the Cameroon government. When the topic reads, Cameroon denies asking for help with Anglophone crisis. What does it mean? It means that they, do, they, they are first of all refused that they do not have anything to do with Canada. But Canada could not be stupid to have made this kind of declarations and still say that they hold their stand. Maybe Dr. Santos and Foncha should get back to their findings. Because I know this that took place. And I know those who attended the meetings. Those are still secrets. I don't want to you get the point. Because it's still unfolding. But they should be able to do finding because they have their colleagues who attended. Most of these who attended this. They should not come here as if Canada has gotten money and has a particular interest and they are blowing grammar in the air. Look at the statement from Funta. Funta tells us that we are journalists. The Canadian ambassador has not made any statement. It means he has no knowledge on, on diplomacy. He has no knowledge on diplomacy and hierarchical presentation. The foreign minister or ministry is the head of all diplomatic services. Which means the minister, the foreign minister controls all ambassadors around the world. And before the foreign minister makes a statement, it is the stem of that country in short. Fucha, you are well. Take your pen and books and, and, and begin to write. And so you will not expect that when the foreign ministry of Canada comes out of declaration, the ambassador here should come out in jail. He could come, yes, but he, there are procedures. They move on mandate. Because when the boss talks, you cannot come and you start you know, challenging. Unless the boss tells you, please, go back and read the fact I mentioned because the current ministry cannot give a stand that represents the stand of the Canadian government, which will be different from that of the ambassador who is working under the tutelage of the country that sent him. These, these things are, are easy for one child to understand. So if you come on a platform like this and we begin to blow grammar because maybe we have some benefits left to write, look at the confusion we are confusing ourselves on broad daylight. Take even two of them diplomacy. Those of the generation that cook at us and say, but is this man really normal? Because this is the thing we have to understand. Now, before I cut, cut across now to wrap up Mr. List, the issue is this. These person were supposed to... They, see, Dr. Santos, I should be honest, this is a gentleman. Tell the government you have blown that. When the system was coming up, factions of the separatist fighters were refusing A and B. It was a whole hell. But to have seen them come out and they're appreciating that the government has now decided to. These gentlemen in America should say, these guys did well. If you hear I don't have any problem. I am not their leader. But if they take a move, I personally, I said on several platforms that if the ambassadors are now agreeing for peace talk, it means that peace has finally come. But at the end of the whole show, I think that when we work in honesty, because millions of viewers are watching us who are more intelligent than us talking this grammar here. And when water is in our mouth, they know that there's water here and there's water there. So in a nutshell, if the state comes out to dance about a dance, it is a sham because the foreign ministry, Canadian ministry, still insists on their stand. And you know with the white, they don't talk much. They only tell you, I insist on my stand. And before you know it, they can start bringing evidence that show that A was in the meeting, B was in the meeting, C was in the meeting. How do you come to explain that? And so, if we have a mediator that comes in, and seemingly Swiss talk stream, and Canadian talk is coming out, and the government that attended these meetings, as I'm surprised that Fonta tells us that it's a faction of prime minister, just imagine how we want to plot the government against the commission. Those watching us in Yaoundé could start, should start thinking that Prime Minister is acting different from head of state. No! These are outrageous things that can even plunge Yaoundé regime into conflict by men. Kita envoyé même. Kita envoyé. No! There is a anogonigram. Prime Minister can never engage aspects of peace talk crossing across borders without the regime being aware. This is diplomacy. If not, it could be termed as treason. Because there are key issues you cannot take out of the state, the total boundaries, without informing the powers that be that you are engaging this and without getting a green accord to involve. So, those in the diaspora must understand it. If they don't know, we can teach them diplomacy here and now. So they get to understand that there are statements you give. You have to water the statement, you have to look at it because the statement implicate you, and the statements, if not well catered for, can even cause confusion in the camp of the government who will think that you have an idea of what the Prime Minister is doing behind the, or, or, or at the back of the head of state, which is not so because the Prime Minister is answerable to head of state, President Paul Bia. We should not come here and be blowing government if it's a faction that go up and down. Do we have facts on the faction? No. Prime Minister has no complaint that he engaged in and this and that. They stick to the middle of complaint that, which is not mine. They have their reasons. But for us to come up here and be to defend a reason and giving other wrong reasons, it is appalling and it's a sacrilege to the welfare of this country called Cameroon. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fire Evis. Uh, we got your point clearly. If the peace talks were not uh, in accordance or accepted by the government Cameroon, 
uh, Dr. Akojol. Why then did the Prime Minister come out, or rather, why then the Minister of Communication come out with the communicate denying that the Cameroon government did not mandate any external entity to mediate the, the crisis? Why is that confusion, or where is it, the confusion coming from? Uh, very interesting. Very interesting. The fact is that the government, too, had never informed Cameroonians that they were in negotiation with anybody. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we need to understand sometime in 2021, you realize that when negotiations between separatist leaders at the Kondengi prison, it's government officials at the um, um, Volier, uh, I don't know, Episcopal uh, Center, a lot of those negotiations were made with Ayuk Tabe and others. The same government came out to say they are not in negotiation with anybody. And somewhere they come publicly to tell you that they are for peace. Mm -hmm. When you have people of a double sort nature, and somewhere I'm telling you double sort in the light that the Prime Minister Cameroon, everybody now is aware, that since he came into office, this gentleman has been doing enough and a lot, putting in a lot of energy if this crisis can come to an end. But somewhere at the corridors of power, when you get somebody like Nick Santos telling you of part of it is absurd. The Prime Minister is head of government for Christ's sake. And if Prime Minister is head of government, every other member of government submits to the power of the President, to the, of the Prime Minister. But now, con considering what a first set uh, we are living within a kangaroo system where nothing follows formalities. If the, press, the Prime Minister speak, the only person to contradict, contradict the authority of the Prime Minister is the President of the Republic. But when you find another minister fighting you, it tells Cameroonians that the very reason under which this country is for crisis is just like that an anglophone cannot talk and this government moves on that path. Because if the Prime Minister was Prime Minister, we know energy has been put in. We have seen the Prime Minister talking in Bamenda, something else, and a minister telling you something else in your way. And that option of the minister starts. Who then are we fooling? Are we really doing the government as a theater, I mean a stage, where they come and act their movie and then we just have to talk. It is again sad that people will be telling you, even those who are living within the corridors of power, to gay. I mean, guess what? That is because separatists said, when the major national dialogue was organized, how many separatist leaders were there? Were there? Didn't the government go ahead with the major national dialogue? Otherwise, a monologue. When they made meetings and some of them came and drank, spent money in huge, I mean, expensive hotels, government gave checks to some to display from. To come home. At the end of the day, I mean, what we have been saying is that put on, there is never a day, Cameroonians, even the government in Cameroon is aware that you find everybody, even those in government, telling you that we are okay with it, we can talk now, and we cannot talk now. If jealously we have what they call the motherland, fatherland, the promise we have made to Cameroon is to settle the sons and daughters of Cameroon in the way we can do it until our own time will expire. I tell people, Cameroon will remain. But Cameroonians will pass away. The only history that we have to make is who will think what will the people talk of us when we are no longer on the stage. You are not here. We don't know what people are going through. Please and consider. There's a lot of dynamics. It is not propagated. It is not a, an, an office's choir. A crystal's pronunciation. It takes a political will to do so. These are Cameroonians. Some are dying even at the moment we are talking. It sons and daughters, parents, fathers of others. This one said that is a need for lasting peace. Lasting peace, not perishable solutions. When you come and make such declaration, at the time that you are waiting, yes, it is completely out of place for somebody to tell you that after a foreign minister made a declaration, the ambassador need to talk. I want to tell you that in international politics, the foreign minister of the nation has spoken. We needed to get from the other side of the Cameroon government, and the Cameroon government must respond through his own spokesperson, Le Jean Bella Bella, and many others that found the corridor of international politics know and are aware that the Cameroon government was negotiating. I, yeah, am aware that the Cameroon government was negotiating. In a speech, May and the Pope second his opinion, the United States second and opined to that. I mean, the United Kingdom equally opined that the Canadian initiative is laudable and was appreciated. And you find a government where people are ruling on horses and heights Pilots and others on armed chairs that they think they will never come down. And then come out to tell you that we are not talking. In whose position are you talking? 
for the people of Cameroon or for yourself. It equally suits well with what Dr. Santos said, that egoistic southern alternatives is what is bringing down Cameroon. Many people think that they talk for themselves. But I will tell them that we are aware not up to 1% of these people rule Cameroon or control Cameroon. We are 99% against the 1% decision. That is, you know, we need to feel free. We need to move in this country. We need to take a movement from north to south, east to west without fear. And today, some people are, I mean, scrapped up in one part and another part uncomfortable. Others' businesses flourishing, others unable to eat. Others live on wanted places in and around Africa. Others comfortable in their glass houses. And others use the same event to lobby for personal recognition and identity. What Santos and the other did in Washington was a mere publicity of their identity. If you talk for the name of the people, there is need to tell the government you fought that. There was need to talk. Yes, uh, Fonta Obi, reconciliation will not take us any cost. We have a duty, no matter what it takes, to bring people to talk. Everybody might not be okay, but we need to move on. Peace and negotiation is a continuous process. Even those countries that have gained independence, after the independence, they had internal squabbles. That is why the Pope will insult Sudan. It has not ended, and we will not stop talking. The Pope could go down low to the shoes of all expert Africans with dirty heads for what they thought came, but they were still unable to maintain it. We will not give up for peace until peace returns, no matter what it takes. Time in, the train will keep on ruling, others will join, others will fall, others will come later. Some may be at the end of the journey, but peace is worth seizing. That is the opportunity. And whether you eat from it or not, the people those who are suffering related to one person or the other, of you know very well that we can live where we live and we are living well. But what our brothers and sisters were unable to miss it. I just made an illusion here. Yeah? I've lost a chief in my village. I'm unable to get there because the circumstances don't permit me. We are deeply hurt. We need to support what is right no matter what it takes. It is not the fact that the majority speak a lie. That makes it the truth. And even if one person speaks a lie, that remains a lie. Even if 100 accept a lie, it is a lie. And one person speaking the truth prevents the truth. We know the force of the government. That decision, go and read. 99% of the forces to negotiate rest with the Cameroon government. 99%. Whosoever, Amber, ADF, Kamasesh, whatsoever, whosoever in this battle is the least. If government convey people tomorrow for Switzerland or Canada, people will be present. You will be present. Others will be, others may not be come. But we need lobbying because we need them. We need everybody for sustainable peace. We have Cameroon that one of its most internationally abrupt being sold was that is the most stable nation in the whole of Central Africa. Can we be proud now where we are that Cameroon is a stable and more peaceful nation? We cannot. We cannot. There is a need that when people have grown up, it is not because maybe others have controlled power for the years they have been there. There is a need for sustainability. A building, everything, the new machines, we have minister in government for 20, 22 years. It is what is taking us into this. It comes back to a going tendency because you are not capable of renegotiating power. We need a new Cameroon where people can think otherwise. Can we move to the Pope? Why not? Others have used the office of the Pope. Look at the elections in Congo. The Catholic Church, I mean the Catholic Church in Congo, played a predominant role. And they all accepted for the outcome. And this is where Congo is. Though with the fighting in the north or whatsoever frontier with Rwanda, it will not change that Congo is equally for peace, and the church is playing its role, giving timely and early reporting. That is why the Pope will visit the country. That is why the Pope will be visiting South Sudan. It's a continued peace initiative that has not ended. Even when we conclude later, we need to make up. Nigeria can have an agreement. The agreement is being shattered and being jerky. That is why there's a continuous follow up what they call ad hoc commissions. And why not? Cameroon case cannot be handled on a twinkle of an eye. It may take centuries. I told some years back. When the crisis started, what has just started in Cameroon may take us another century or half a century to handle. We are not willing, and every day we see dealing techniques from both camps to continue bringing down the witches and the intentions of the better people of Cameroon with the mandate we have given the government. The government has the right to said several times. It is not by Facebook. Since a state exists by Facebook declaration, how can a Facebook message twat and twist government position? In direct diplomacy, which is not even with those organizations you call, is vis a vis other nations. The decision them by government affect other governments and states that were in support of the movement. We are Cameroonians and we know how it is intended. Cameroon needs peace, no matter what it takes. The first error the government made, where the first negotiation failed, was the dissolution of the consortium. 
That was the talking point between Cameroon and Cameroon. No matter what it was going to take us, the consumption was supposed to remain an institution. But the same egoistic tendencies, power uh, bongas, people want to prove to the others, Bala and Justice, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Neba, that they are more powerful than them. Let's cancel it, let's arrest them tomorrow, and they will see what to do. When they don't have what to eat, they will go back to the courts. Yes, we are going back to the courts today, has peace returned. That is what the morphology of this may not get. Cameroonians, the more ignorant will keep on accepting with the government twisting and coming back. I insist that there's need for peace. And the Prime Minister's office remains the lone office for that. Except the head of state is telling us now that there are other ministers that talk better than the Prime Minister. We should stop twisting the young man. The politics in Cameroon is not like other nations. Otherwise, the Prime Minister at this level has a right to submit his resignation and tell the government I'm not ready to be twisted as that. And he won't lose anything. He remains a public civil servant. It was a political appointment. I will take his posture in his domain where he belongs. But all Cameroonians work for their family and their stomach and nothing less for the general interest of Cameroon. Things are more sustainable in a nation. We think of the interests of all rather than individual interests. The Prime Minister, the Chief Dr. Jokute, is a man with a good heart and right. has all intention. Any other minister can be him, and we must listen from him. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Ako, John Lecturer and Political Analyst. Uh, peace and negotiation is a continuous process, and that's exactly what uh, Chief Dr. John Gute, uh, Prime Minister of Cameroon, noted uh, in 2019 after the major national dialogue. He noted that uh, the Cameroon Fed has been in continuous uh, talks with uh, separatists in a bit to end the crisis in its two English speaking bridge. And uh, that's, of course, uh, what many have been hoping for. Peace negotiation should uh, continue to end the crisis. And we've seen an initiative here. Uh, being piloted by CADA, the Canadian Initiative to End the Crisis in Cameroon. We're looking at uh, expecting that this was supposed to actually uh, bring the two parties to a dialogue and a negotiation and a way out of the crisis. The President's office is yet to react, but the Minister of Communication came out to denounce or deny that Cameroon has not mandated any uh, external authority to help in the peace process. Now, uh, Dr. Nima Santo, who do you think at this level, regarding what has been happening so far, is uh, not willing to, or uh, who is benefiting from the chaos in the two English speaking regions? Who is benefiting from uh, the crisis that is ongoing regarding the fact that uh, Chief Dr. Dongo T said dialogue has been going, talks have been ongoing between the government and separatists, but an initiative as such uh, led by Canada, we've seen uh, a committee saying the common government is not in accordance so i've not mandated anybody now who is benefiting uh, from the chaos which of course is ongoing in northwest and southwest regions dr nicolas santo are you with us can you hear me can you hear me we can hear you dr nicolas santo hello uh before i answer, answer the question i need to respond to mr pat Elvis before he, he he mentioned my name a couple of times. Uh, the first thing I'll tell Mr. Pa Evis is that you it, it is just his style of talking. The same way he talks, it may be it's a reflection of one of the reasons why a minister should write this kind of a letter. Because let me tell you, when you come out to defend the position of an illusionary state by taking that position of Amazonia, mm -hmm. it's not the position for which the Cameroon government mm -hmm. was about anything. Not for the recognition of the, that state, but his discussions were some sort of defending their position because they are not here and undermining what myself, Poncha, have been doing a long time ago. Because if you talk of the Grand National Dialogue, for example, which is the foundation for which all these peaceful discussions have been going on after a long period between 2017 16 to 2020 or so, there had been a deadlock. And so are the ones who break that impasse by discussing with the delegation to the Grand National Dialogue that came to the United States. And at that time, we were still in the separatist movement before we educated others and took them out of it. So what is happening now is most people who are still there are still using that rhetoric, which the Cameroon government has vowed that they will not recognize anybody that uses that rhetoric of calling themselves a state that has not gained statehood. This is where we are. So let's not be lying to ourselves. We know that 
uh, uh, these errors are being committed by those who claim to be leaders in the diaspora because they want the struggle to continue so that they keep on with their activities of kidnapping ransom. They keep on with the activities of uh, uh, identification and projection of themselves as leaders of a country that doesn't exist on the internet. So when we talk about all these things you guys have said here, uh, pointing fingers to me, myself and Roger, uh, the things that we have been criticizing then make us to walk out of it because first of all, they don't listen to anybody. They have an agenda of generating money that they are buying arms, which is money meant for paying their house rent, clothing themselves. Most of them are unemployed. And you see this kind of things, then you say myself and Poncha to continue to support this kind of people instead of supporting the pathway to peace. Are you kidding me? Then again, you come to talk about us having ego. If we were having ego, we would have joined the cabal of making this illicit money in the diaspora from them for kidnapping. Madame Regina Monti paid 50 million. Who are those who received this money? Why is the American government rounding some of them up? Because of money that pass in their bank accounts. They are making this money and they want it to continue. That's why they continue to claim that there is a state that doesn't exist. So that whatever good feeling that the Cameroon government had of discussing, and it extending a hand to them, must be thwarted. Then Mr. Fah, there's one thing you said about this, like you're trying to lecture some of us about international relations. Remember I had a bachelor's in political science, a master's in psychology, and a doctorate in clinical psychology. And I was awarded a, a humanitarian lifetime achievement award by President Joe Biden in the United States of America. So don't, you don't come to dampen my judgment as if academically I'm unsound. I'm a psychologist. I diagnose a situation. I look into the pros and the cons, and I jump out of the water when it is hot and find for several grounds where I can take my people out, limit the amount of killings on the grounds. I've been working, helping, advising as a psychologist, advising the state of Cameroon, advising the separatists on the best direction to go, which is peace. How can you criticize us for going to talk this issue with the, with the, with the president of the Republic at the direction of peace? How can you criticize us for coming online? and apologizing for any bad comments we have ever made. Because when you apologize and make a new turn, it's a point is to show that it's a sign of maturity. It's not a sign of weakness. And we expect those hard, uh, those, those, those uh, minded separatists who are still using, who are still committing these errors, because you know, the errors may be intentional, intentional in that they want the fact that the dialogue should not continue by continuously to continuously using that statement of Amazonia, Amazonia, Amazonia in the presence of Cameroonian authorities, which is what they have said, they don't want this, don't use this. So this is one of the things happening. And we all know that there are some members of government who are profiting from this. They are profiting from this. This is not something new. But the fact is, let Mr. Far Evans and whatever come know that myself and Fulcher, we are working for the good of the people. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Nicolas Santo, we got you clearly. We just want to remind us if you're watching that you can get to us directly via WhatsApp, cause only via WhatsApp you can uh, cause and send us your reactions. We'll have them uh, here uh, during the program. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Forte, you just listened to Dr. Uh, Nicolas Santo. To you, is it the separatists who are uh, not willing to dialogue to end the crisis in the Tungus speaking regions? Taking on what uh, Dr. Nicolas uh, has just cited. We saw Cameroon government organized a 2019 major national dialogue, which uh, uh, ended with uh, special status. We've seen other peace initiatives uh, like the Swiss talks. We've seen the coalition for dialogue and negotiation, the consortium, and the Ghana peace talk, and a lot of others which have failed. Do you think uh, it's been uh, those initiatives are failing because uh, the separatists are not really know who? Do you think is responsible for? Uh, not wanting a crisis to come to an end through po a possible uh, peace and negotiation. So I also want to take uh, to respond to Mr. Fai, uh, the statements that he has made out here on our uh, TV. I don't know if you can hear me. There's a lot of uh, uh, static on the background. Can you hear me? Okay, it's better now. Yes, I want to take this opportunity also to uh, respond to Mr. Fai. I want to uh, uh, say that Mr. Fai, from his statements, it is, is sounds like he is um, he's appeasing the separatist movement, one. Secondly, Mr. Fai is very disingenuous 
it is characteristics of the statements that are made here. The reason why I use the word a faction of the government, because we all know that we did the Cameroon government, as Professor Ako has rightly said. The Cameroon government, the, the prime minister goes out, who is the head of government, make a statement, and the minister goes back and make another statement. And in most cases, that minister from the French extract of the country, his statement holds. So already right there, Mr. Ako has been, Professor Ako is in agreement with what I said that there is a fashion in the Cameroon government. We know the Prime Minister Head of Government, Chief Dr. John Gucci, has been working very hard for peace to return to Cameroon. And myself and Dr. Nick Santos have been engaged in that process with the Prime Minister's office. And for reasons that I don't want to mention here, there are certain individuals in the Cameroon government who were also part of the free talks in Canada that we are in contact with them that have thwarted initiatives for peace that has been brought up before by the Prime Minister. Some of those initiatives, we were part of it, myself and Dr. Nicholas Santos. So we know that certain individuals in the Cameroon government are profiting from this conflict in the Northwest and Southwest regions. And those individuals, they are the ones standing in the way of peace. The head of state of Cameroon, President Pobia, is an elderly statesman at this point. So we have vibrant, young, educated, very intelligent people within the government that are using their intellectual capacity for nefarious purposes. Why we have others like the Prime Minister, Chief Dr. Don Gute, who is trying to do the best thing for the country. That is the reason why I use that word, faction within the government. If you understand what I'm saying, Mr. Luis. That faction exists within the government. A faction that wants peace and Cameroon to move forward for the better of all the citizens, and our faction that are one piece that are only interested in profiting from the war and also looking to assume power, political power in the country beyond 2025. This is what is happening in the country. So Mr. Fry picks on certain things that are said here and Dr. Lucas Santos and try to highlight it, but he's treating what we have said and sounding almost like an appeaser for the secessionist movement. Now, that is the fault of the government not to pursue this stuff. As I said, it's a missed opportunity. But also, the blame equally goes to the separatist leaders. Because the mindset of going into this peace and reconciliation talk as you are representing the entire population of people in the northwest and southwest regions, and you are going there to speak for their behalf. It's wrong. Going back to the point where Mr. Akome and even Mr. Far. They are sitting in Cameroon. We are sitting in the diaspora. I have made this statement several times over print media and TV segments like this. We in the diaspora, we should only be coming up with ideas and proposals that can bring peace in that country. But when we want to talk about genuine peace and reconciliation, it should be individuals like Mr. Fire and Professor Arco and those of them in Cameroon to be on the table as well to talk about peace. How can you talk about peace in Cameroon with separatist leaders in the diaspora without the presence of stakeholders and the grassroots of the country being part of that peace and reconciliation? So, Canada talks should focus on peace and reconciliation, which means secession, secession of arms hostilities in the Northwest and Southwest region that some of the separatists are sponsoring. Now, if the separatist leaders agree to that, then I want to urge the Cameroon government and those individuals within the Cameroon government that are blocking peace initiatives that have been put on the table by the Prime Minister to fall behind the Prime Minister who is head of government so we can solve this problem once and for all. So I have not made any statement that is supportive of the government. I have instead objectively criticized the government. As I said in my statement, the Cameroonians must, the real patriots must objectively criticize their government. Because if they don't, they are also part of the tyranny that they live under, of which they live under. So we are here not to support the Cameroon government for their excesses. And we are also here not to support the secessionist leaders for their excesses. Because I can tell you frankly, some factions of the secessionist movement have completely morphed 
into financial criminal syndicates. This is a fact. And these financial criminal syndicates, they are sponsoring acts that can be categorized as terrorism in the Northwest and Southwest because, yes, some of those fighting factions on the ground are actually terrorizing the same people they are claiming to, 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 to protect. So Cameroonians are dying from both ends, from the hands of the separatists and from the hands of the uh, regular government forces because okay. there are so many instances that certain factions, certain uh, sponsors of the regular government forces have committed atrocities as well. So we are not here to support the Cameroon government. We are objectively criticizing their actions as well. So Mr. Fad should withdraw that statement that we are here trying to push ourselves on, on a island. We are not interested in political positions in Cameroon. We are fighting for the, the better for the next generation of Cameroonians. We are not interested. Okay. But because it's our ancestral homeland, we take it on ourselves to know that, yes, we come to and say, yes, we have an existential problem, political problem, economic problem, that led some of us to join the arms insurrection. And this arms insurrection, I can clearly say, Mr. Fai and Professor Ako have made this a very you guys have done before. It's due to the pressure of the arms insurrection in Cameroon. I'm not condoning it, but I will say that the arms insurrection in, that began in 2017 brought pressure to bear for the first time in Cameroon history that the government organized a grand national dialogue, which I can categorize it as the international and public acceptance by the government of Cameroon for the first time that there is a problem in the country. Because we remember uh, the Minister of the Central Administration before he became Minister. And um, uh, Ms. Mr. Atanganji Paul went on the media and said that there is no anglophone problem. We remember that statement. But fast forward, the pressure that was brought to bear due to the arms insurrection forced the government to organize this national dialogue, and all the separatist leaders, were, including myself, was in, were invited to the grand national dialogue. But because of security, we couldn't go, and because the international community was not there to give us the protection that we need. Okay, Mr. Fogg. I remember in 20, one, 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 one point I got to make here, in 2020, I think it was 2020, myself and Dr. Dr. Nicolas Santos, we had a two-hour meeting with the Cameroon ambassador at the embassy in Washington, D.C. The plan was for us to fly to Cameroon and go and talk to people about peace and reconciliation. And because some of our American citizens, the then Secretary of State for African Affairs, Mr. Thibault Nagy, under the Trump administration, we were about to get clearance from the State Department of the United States for the United States to put, give us the security that we need to go to Cameroon. So now, we are still urging the Cameroon government to get back to this peace and reconciliation talks with the citizens state. We are not rejecting. But it should be genuine on both sides, not one side. We cannot blame the Cameroon government and don't blame the citizens. Both sides are at fault, and we have to accept that, and we know. Peace and reconciliation, as Professor Ako rightly said, is an ongoing process. Then we have to guarantee the safety and protection of those who are going to be involved. Hey, we don't have to talk in Canada. We can talk in Boya. We can talk in Yaoundé. If the international community in the West Canada provide the necessary international security and guarantees, we will all converge in our country like how the Afghanistan people, they organize the loyal jogger and Afghanis from all over the world went to Kabul. Or Iran, when people like Adrian Chalabi, the left United States, all of them, they went back to Baghdad to have a peace and reconciliation summit in the Green Zone. So we want international guarantees. So I'm not making the Canadian talks. I'm not saying that there was no free talks. All I am saying is the secessionists made a mistake, and the government also have factions with it that don't want peace. That's what I got to say, Mr. Lewis. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Poncha. Those of you who have been trying to get to us uh, through the number on your screen, you can call us again directly and we'll take your calls and uh, equally listen to your different reactions. We'll gladly welcome them. Uh, Mr. Gene Elvis, uh, who benefits from the chaos in the Northwest and Southwest regions? Well, the several uh, field uh, peace initiatives beginning from the major national dialogue to the other peace initiatives that have failed. Who do you think benefits from uh, the continuous chaos and who is against uh, peace initiatives, which uh, of course have been failing in with regards to bringing an end to crisis in the two respective regions? Well, I think I'm a uh, 
I would say on both sides, we have people who don't want this price to come to an end because they do have what the benefit from it. It has become a money making affair for many. That's what we see. And uh, my concern as of now is really not those who are benefiting from it, but that with respect to what um, we've all been saying here as Cameroonians. I think our concern and focus remains the fact that there should be a process and that the state of Cameroon, like the separatist leaders, should be able to give it a chance. Thank God that the, Cameroon, the Canadian process is here. We can only but continue to call on the state of Cameroon to get back onto the table so that these talks can um, uh, begin. You know, when I hear um, uh, other talk, I mean particularly um, uh, uh, Santos and um, Foncha, the question I keep asking myself is, if we have a prime minister who is the head of government, who are the other people in the faction that will talk and the state decides to follow what the other ministers have said and that individual who is their head has stipulated? Because I can still say again, if Cameroon was part of the pre talk, and of course we know they were, at least the prime minister championed it, if we that his ministry, uh, he, yes, his office championed that, and they must have been informed. So I don't see any reason why they can back up because there are some other ministers perhaps who did not or do not want me because I'm not getting from the whole system on that. Secondly, when I still hear them talk, and we talk about um, uh, Cameroon backing up because um, uh, the, the, the services are still insisting, insisting, insisting on the fact that they are ambassador leaders. That is not my concern. I was not part of it. But the question is, before Cameroon engaged in the pre talks, with whom were they talking in the pre talks? Were you not the same people? That's why I keep saying that the most important thing here is that we should give this process a chance, mm. let the mediators and the facilitators use the prowess and see how they can cause or come both parties to be able to give in at certain points and uh, let go at certain points and or, or whatnot. It is a give and take process. And like we say, it must begin for us to get some But if you pretend to want to be for peace, yet you will not accept any peace process, then I say this a problem. At this particular point in time, I hear people talk about um, hypocrisy and whatnot. I want to point that as it stands, the Cameroon government perhaps has played the hypocrisy through the international community. And uh, the other way that I think, Mr. Biden, that the real problem here is that with the arrogance and the pride of we cannot talk to terrorists, we cannot talk to terrorists, the terrorists that might even be the reason why the state of Cameroon could not outrightly come out to accept that they are into a process because it may cause people to ask questions. But I want to think, from, the, from my own understanding, you know how this government functions. Uh, unfortunately, we lost connections again with you, Mr. Gene Elvis. Uh, we have indications that, that you'll see call online. Yeah, uh, just one minute, let's have a call line and get back to you, Mr. Gene Elvis. Uh, we have someone online. Hello, good afternoon. You are live on Africa Media. Let's hear you. Hello, we have a call online. Good afternoon. You are live on the Pan African Zibi. media are you getting me <laughs> yes, I'm just, I don't want to confuse uh, uh, my own disconnection is saying um, if I this and uh, the rest of my brother back home I'm trying to say you guys in the studio I say hi to you all uh, yes, they're talking about uh, Dr. Nick Santos and uh, my brother Foncha here I'm trying to uh, tell them that this issue of uh, this dialogue is they should be able to say the truth by sitting behind criticizing other people they are terrorists are these if people are instead aggravating the situation and it will change whether the government lied or not they have to sit with these people and dialogue this thing to be to end you people are seeing all what is going on the ground our people are dying i saw Munyenge yesterday on a video i, I wept and we, have, we don't know what is going on the ground. Don't mind all of the, the, the Anglophones that have bonded yourself into FACO and the field that that's where they sit. What about our grandmother in all those in Yumucho, in, 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 in all those villages? People are no more there. And when we come in the media, instead of calm down people, we sit and with our code, we are doctors. We are this. That those doctors, we should remove our doctors and put aside and see how we can sort our differences when we solve this problem. Oh, people that are in the situation, the people that matters are the people that are carrying guns. Let me be honest to you guys. You can sit there with your code and make noise. The people that matter are the people that carry guns, they are instigating on the ground, and the fight is going on. But instead of you guys to come, I will see how to make this thing work. People are dancing with the government. There's two factions of the government, of Cameroon government. Every person knows. 
but we should be able to explain the truth. Doctor Ruth and my brother Moncha, you guys sit there uh, about me. Uh, you, you guys know me, and I know you people. But the problem is, we should not be aggravating the situation. Please, we should say things the way they are. I pity when I, I, I'm telling you, someone in the yesterday that cry. We don't know. People are going to serve in Faco, and you go are they clapping? All right. So uh, that's my only two points. Thank you very much. Thanks for your opinion. We heard you. And we have another call online. Uh, good afternoon. You're live on Africa Media. Let's get your opinion. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, we could not get you. Uh, Mr. Gina Elvis, uh, maybe uh, you wrap up with your, what you were saying in just one minute before we, we move on. Okay, Mr. Gilbert, thank you very much. I was saying, and I will just conclude by that, that um, uh, it doesn't matter those who are benefiting, be it on the ambassador side, be it on the part of the state of Cameroon. What I would rather say here is this. There is no one individual or group of individuals who are above the state of Cameroon, for instance. So if there are a handful of persons who don't want the war to come to an end, at least the prime minister who is head of government and who is fighting hard for peace to return, if he is championing something, a cause which we believe the head of state is informed about, I think it is enough for the government of Cameroon to engage into that process. Secondly, for once, we saw a greater majority of the Ambazonian League groups accept to come together and meet Canada, and even those like um, the Irish of Chris and who were not there again, ended up giving their, yes, they are like saying they're going to join. I think, and I'll say again that the Canadian process to me is a chance that we should not let go. It is not yet too late. And uh, like, uh, I would just want to conclude by saying, we should know one thing, Mr. Bidben. When we sit on major like this to talk, like Mr. Far Elvis said, it is not because we are the most intelligent, it is just that you have given us the opportunity to contribute our own ideas. An honorable man is judged by virtue of what he says and what he does. And we are all judged here by the audience that watches us. So I am happy that on this platform we have two other people. And so we should all mind the things we say, if truly we believe that what we say is going to work in line with what we are all clamoring for, which is return to peace in those who are in the form of British Southern Cameroon. I think I can have that map at this level. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gene Elvis. Uh, equally an indication that we have a call online. We just take five minutes to receive your uh, reactions before we come back to conclude with our panelists here in the studio. Uh, hello, you're live on the program. Good afternoon to you. Well, uh, let's uh, try to hook up with uh, other callers. Uh, Hello, good afternoon. You're live on Africa Media. Let's get your opinion. You're live on Africa Media. Let's get your opinion. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Let's get your opinion, You're please. Good afternoon. Yeah, I want to thank um, uh, Fire Elvis and. Uh, Doctor, who is on the panel to tell them that congratulations, they should continue to educate the Cameroonian because they are on the feed and they also are on the feed and see what happens. We should forget about the big grandma, those people who are in America that are sitting there, talking what they don't know, talking diplomatic, telling who Cameroonians, I am this, I am that. We are not out for that for now. What we need now is how to go to the table and discuss peace. People are dying on the ground. I was yesterday at a corner. What happened there? If they are there in America talking what they are talking, if their mother or their brother or their family were there, they wouldn't have been saying what they are saying now. They should tell the Cameroon government that our people are dying. We should go to Canada for a peace talk. A peace talk does not mean that we are going to separate the country. A peace talk has a process. If we bring our own suggestion and the government of Cameroon being its own suggestion we are going to debate and come up with a solution not to sit on um, in America and be blaming big grammar selling provoking people on the ground I have lost my parents I have lost things in my village I cannot go to my place business I'm not moving here in Cameroon and they're talking nonsense I'm sorry to tell them that they're talking nonsense because they're not on the field if they give envelopes to come and talk nonsense they should know that we have refugees over this is another case that America has sent for our refugees are they as a defense of Cameroon? Sir, tell them they should call the Cameroon government to go to the table. 
be with your reaction. Thanks for participating on the program. Uh, certainly, let's uh, get to the last call before we conclude here. Uh, good afternoon. You're live on Africa Media. Can we get your reaction? All right. Too uh, unfortunate. Uh, let's have this caller. Hello, you're live on Africa Media. Let's hear you. You're live on Africa Media. Good okay. afternoon. Let's get your reaction, please. Hello. Um, my name is Junior. I want to ask a question to. Uh, can you hear me? Are you hearing? Yeah, reduce the volume of your TV set. We get you. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm away from my phone now. Can I ask my question? Go ahead. Right, I want to ask um, uh, Dr. Monsanto. Uh, uh, I said that uh, uh, two of them to get uh, Sorry, your life's not, uh, your network is not the very best. We will not continue with your your call. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the program. You're live on Africa Media. Can we hear you? You're live on Africa Media again. Let's hear one, please. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm, thank you so much for having me on the program. Um, I'm calling, yeah, I'm calling from Matada. Uh, uh, talking about the, the, the talks. Which, uh, it's been to TV. I just want to say that Cameroon is just playing a, a kind of game that people do not understand. Because I don't think the Canadian government will come out and fully tell people that, uh, that they're engaging in talk with uh, the, the parties involved in the conflict. And uh, some of this later, they are going to like, like to come over to, to deny the fact, you know, they just the time because they know that should the Southern Cameroon, should the Ambazonians see the government they're able to start negotiating, they know that the conditions to be put forth, they will not be able to accept. That's the only fear because they know once they sit on the table to start talking, it is gone. So it is gone. Amazonia is gone. So they don't be all time and try to seek advice from France, which is not even helping them, helping them to see that they delay the process and the process was not to the light of day. After they did the major national dialogue, what has happened? Nothing has happened. I don't know organizations, international organizations, uh, uh, gave money to the, the Cameroon government, the Republic government, to, to, to rebuild South Cameroon. Up to this date, what project has carried out in, in, in Amazonia? No project has carried out. You know. So the poor are there, you're just talking without any strings attached to negotiate the reason why we should believe in them. Uh, I belong to I belong to a group and I've seen some horrible pictures where some uh some Cameroonians have been taken out of uh, really out of a bar in in, in, in the north uh, in the northern zone of Ambazonia and shot there they are presumed to be Amazonian fighters. What determined that the Amazonian fighters for the military to go pull them out and shoot them and kill them. So we live in a, in, a, in a situation where it is dying and we need the parties to go to the table, sit and talk, so that we come to the end of this matter. If they keep doing it, I bet you we are on the road to leaving the Republic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your opinion. And uh, our reason for being here on this topic is to find ways to resolve the crisis in the English speaking region. And uh, we need advocating for division, no war, but advocating towards a possible dialogue to end the crisis. Five is how do we get to that dialogue finally? Uh, we'll look at 2019 till now, the several field peace initiatives. And uh, this is certainly, should we call it the final bus stop? Should we uh, mount pressure on who and how should we achieve that peace that will put the, an end to the crisis? Definitely, we have to mount the pressure. Whether Yaoundé likes it or not, they will dialogue with the separatists, whatever name we have. Whether they like it or not, we must come down from our children's horses. That's why I see the American panelists who are talking there. My worry has been that when you say you don't want to dialogue with the illusionary state, but that's the illusionary state that is keeping us down, ghost towns. That is the illusionary state that holds an economy, a physical economy with man by Jews, uh, as Jews minister, hostage. What are they talking about? The other they live the drama of illusionary state. If an illusionary state is playing an impact, it's not like you go to a church and they talk about miracles and a man prays and you are falling. You don't see the power, but you feel it. It means that there's a power. So if a power goes just by air and people are falling, 
It means that the first to welcome it. You don't need to see the face before you say that. No, it's the illusionary Holy Spirit. I want to see the Holy Spirit physically. No, these are errors we do day in, day out, and prolong this work for no good reason. I've seen the gruesome images out there in Bamenda of the two young guys uh, who have been shot dead uh, in cold blood. Is that the kind of job that we like? That if a man is said to be this, uh, maybe a most amateur fighter and he cannot be tried, when they are competent court. Now, look at how we have to put this in front. In front. But those who don't align with, with our ideas will say no. The way Fry is talking, I see him uh, giving on the staff of the services. That is the rhetoric I got from the response of the American people there, now, on this platform. And so you see that, that policy of despising, once an idea comes and looks to be opposite from theirs, whether it is manned by enemies or not, the next thing is that Fry is only accepting the way he's talking. And that's how many have gone in. I tell you now. People have been locked up only because someone just comes something and say, this is my issue and before you know it. So what is the way forward? Let Corona this well with the American watching us now. Those on the platform there. We will not be talking grammar any longer. The way forward is simple. When you are calling for pre-talks or negotiations or whatever, it should not be tagged to particular clauses. A man should come if you say Ambassador, I say yes. Come, your ambassador, no problem. I'm not refilling. Come and let's talk about your Ambassonian state and let us hear. Don't say if he's calling Ambassador, he will not accept. If you cause anything, not go nowhere, southwest, that's where you will accept. That is where I say that we have that sort of ego that is killing us till now. And so we must move to the table pre talks. Next point, next point to put in place, if we want to switch, is that we must be able to be honest to ourselves and look for what we call a venue of neutrality as well as for conflict resolution. I don't know how people study conflict resolution. I don't know. Eric is there. What if the international relations schools are there and all that? I don't know how people start if they are refused because this thing is not from me. They, there are steps to follow when conflict resolution is concerned. We talk about venue of neutrality. Once people are identified, the story and the excuse of always saying that no, it is because uh, the ambassadors are not united. That's why we cannot. It's a lie. South Sudan, they were in faction. DRC, they have been in faction. Sudan means Sudan, so they have been in faction. But yet, there were a who could come and stand with them. And then others queue up and move. That's how we do conflict. If you are waiting for Amazonia to be united till today, it's a lie. If you are waiting the government as a whole will form a united front camp, you might not be. But they must start from somewhere. And once this is done, I repeat, I've got a parent talk about, you know, the government has a national dialogue. No, that was a monologue. Anybody who refers to that monologue and family bringing together civilian militants is not serious. Because the terms of the conflict were not respected. So what event of the is made, and the data accepted by two parties. I said, the fact that I had, I got some of the Northern Arab actors or, or the leaders, confirming the transition issue means that we could start from there. So we must have all of this put together in a genuine manner. If it is not genuine, as per se, water in our mouth, we will be blown hot air while people are dying day in day out. Those are things okay. I think, but while I bring up the issue of Martinez Zogo, the state, remember a commissioner was killed in Bamenda, mm -hmm. and it was given uh, so to us to track down the culprit. Out of two hours, those who killed that commissioner were tracked down. Five years of that commissioner, they're, they're watching me now. When guy was killed at the, at the travel agency, it's a of it took no less than no time, and the victims were gone. Remember, each time a security officer is killed anywhere in Cameroon, within the towns, when the crime means a business, they have it down. Why is this so very difficult? Mm -hmm. We have an intelligence service, intelligent private service, intelligent government service, they can use them. I tell you that if the government wants to know those killed, they will now. They'll bring them to book now and start doing them now. Unless they're hiding something, they should wash their hands like protest pilot and do the right thing at the right time. People are expecting results. You know, that's another form of conflict we're building. All right. And we don't know how long it can take us for us to get into civil war, which God forbid. So at the end of it, genuine dialogue. Dialogue with others. Bring all your points to the table. If you choose Ghana, you choose Ghana. The third billion that was side phone for family meeting called National Dialogue. Mm. We need a kind of now 15 billion to please Ghana kind of issue. Okay. Put okay. up people wherever they have to come there. Give them protest to sleep. We'll say this. If not, the government is responsible for not wanting this guy to come to an end alongside with those who are fitting fat from the system. All services fighters who too are not to come in mm. must also be held accountable. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Fai. So, ending with you, Dr. Ako John, what is the way out and what is uh, the way forward? Pressure for a dialogue to hold, but yet all the initiatives have uh, been dampened. And who do we blame? Not blaming, actually, but who do we mount the pressure on so much so that Cameroonians, especially those in English speaking regions who are feeling the pinch of uh, this crisis? You had mentioned uh, Prime Minister Joseph John Gute, who is he calling from? Uh, the regions which is he too uh, has some stories about how the crisis has impacted him uh, he's been making efforts in resolving the crisis now what else do you think can be done and who can do what so that this uh, dialogue can hold and peace can actually return yeah um again first of all the wet pressure gives an impression that um 
the person should be conducted a dialogue table by force. Yeah, because there's a need for a peace to return. There, if there is need for peace, we need to do things by will. The voluntary action of people, the intention to talk, and the love of the nation, the love for one another, that we wish to be as one another. When there is an intention for force, then such peace might come and might still be unsustainable. Uh, we don't want peace where Cameroonians will still fight after another six years. Because the Anglo-Francis has been, has been as old as the independent years of this nation. It started right 1961 with the twisting of whether this nation should be 1st of January or 1st October to win none of these people now celebrate this day. And that is why you see some people are telling you that let's get back to 1961 status. And the 1961 status tell you that there were two Cameroons and that two Cameroons had and two independent days, which is normal. And you find in the United States, when we talk of State of the Union, the State of the Union address given by the U.S. President every 20th of January is a recognition that what we call the United States of America is not a territory made up of one single individual, and that is the will of all the factions that came together to form the United States of America. And that when you look at it and we accept to tell the truth to one another, that the world's won the Federal Republic of Cameroon, and once again, the world's won the United Republic of Cameroon, and once again, a single decision brought about the Republic of Cameroon. Are these facts not glaring? Do we need to look for witchcraft? That it is the same cause under which we are fighting, and that the same constitution is troubling. The presidential position and official position can also be rotatory because one part felt, felt weakened, and that it can never become in power because they do not make the majority of this particular nation. And that's so. For more than 60 years now, it is only the Francophone that can help the leadership of the government in Cameroon. And that is, the funds are called to litter on the second ground. Why not even at the fourth ground? Because the prime ministerial power now can be contested and other head boys chosen to make a public communique without the accordance of the prime minister. It's not just an idea that the prime minister simply means first minister when called up, he should answer first to his president and nothing more. If we know in the state, there is a need to accept that institution we created by the constitution. We need to respect them. They said on. The president shall appoint the prime minister on the nomination or uh, suggestion of the prime minister. Other members of government will be uh, nominated. Today, the prime minister is uh, nominated in assembly, and in the assembly, we have the other ministers. That's why we see twisting. And in governments where the prime minister is head of government, if something is not going well, he resigns, and every other minister resigns with him. Today, in Cameroon, it's not the case, and we know very well that only one person overrules here. We have the king, the supreme leader of the nation where everyone gives accounts and still has a more better relationship with him than the person the constitution said he is. That is why government is weaker. We need a Cameroon where all of us can talk to one another. We need Cameroon of our times where we came in love and peace, not by guns and bullets. A Cameroon where we can talk for 3,100 years without a shot or loss of a single life. And that we think that such a nation is a nation that we cry for all. For Cameroonians to come to be one, there is need for the authorities of Cameroon to accept that we are all one an indivisible Cameroon in dignity and in right, and that everybody has a right to fight. everybody has a right to criticize, and that no matter what they do, they do so in the name of the people of Cameroon. That the Constitution has mention of it. Everything we do in the name of the Republic of Cameroon. President Paul Bia remains the overriding host, and we think he can bring, bring this mess to an end. Cameroonians from the public sector, the government officials, those in the government are quarreling, Cameroonians of non Government agencies, separatists, federalists, unionists are divided in the same line. Many others are to sell their image and make plight and even eat from the same money were used, supposed to use to construct the same nation. Others are receive lobbyist character for missions abroad when they cannot conclude how much that mission brought back. What else has the nation gained from all this? We need to concentrate those resources. In Cameroon, we can talk this issue. We can make it happen. We need the will. I just need the government. I mean, we need the will. Okay. That the government of Cameroon should accept that there was a happy Cameroon and that they faltered. The two cubes of sugar have refused to melt, and that those who were hungry as lawyers have gone to court, but the crisis has not ended. And the insult of dogs and animals still reign in people's brain. Can we sincerely tell Cameroonians in an official communique that we had? And it's all wrong, and that we can talk to Cameroonians now. We need one and indivisible Cameroon. A Cameroon whose federalism will be uncontested and uncompared to that of other nations. We know very well the successes of federations, and we know what we can do. We have the energy, we have the resources. Cameroon is one, Cameroon is for all.
President Paul Bia, there is a need equally on your side. Maybe absolute power has corrupted absolutely. 25 is not far. There's a need for a new blood. Why not? Make at the level of your party, we will equally vote a new leadership that can bring you hope. And why not resolve the anglophone problem for time, which we will all appreciate. Thank you very much, Dr. Ako John. Resolve the anglophone crisis for the trade dialogue. It's a possible concern bringing crisis, of course, to one end. Cameroon now is asking for help with anglophone crisis and following the uh, Canada's position in mediating a peace talk to end the crisis in Cameroon. That's our topic, and that was our topic for today. And equally, the murder of journalist uh, Martinez Zogo, a dead blow to press freedom in Cameroon. We appreciate uh, those of you watching us uh, back at home. Thank you very much for coming, and thanks very much for your argument. Dr. Ako John, you are a lecturer and uh, political analyst. We appreciate you for being part of the program. We equally have uh, had Mr. Fivis, journalist and political analyst, Mr. Fivis. We appreciate you equally for your time, and thanks for coming. Yeah. On Zoom from Yaoundé, Cameron's political headquarters, we had Mr. Gene Elvis uh, Bane, journalist and political analyst. Mr. Uh, Gene Elvis, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. We have equally on Zoom. Uh, Honorable Dr. Ngo Santo, you are a humanitarian and peace advocate and equally the 2022 U.S. President Lifetime Award winner. Thanks very much for being there. And equally so, Foncha, chairman of New Africa Coalition. You were equally on Zoom, uh, and equally all those of you who were watching us back at home, and those of you who were watching us live on Facebook. Those of you who are equally, we appreciate you, our technicians uh, who made it possible for the program to be live on air this uh, afternoon. We equally very much appreciate those of you who were watching. A rebroadcast will be yours on Monday at exactly 14 hours GMT. Until then, more programs are yours on Africa Media. Stay with us all for now.